have you bothered to find out why Satan and his people will be in hellfire? Have you thought about it? Why would Satan and his people be in hellfire? Why would Satan and his people be in hellfire? Number two, why is it that when the Holy Spirit was going to be announced on the day of Pentecost, it came down as clearing tongues of fire? I ask myself this question. Then the next question I ask myself in Revelation chapter 3, 14, 15, 16, it says, I know your works. I know you are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. I wish you were one of them. And, and then God, or because you are neither of them, I will spew you out of my mouth. Then you realize that God doesn't like cold or lukewarm. He likes hot. <laughs> he doesn't like cold. He doesn't like lukewarm or warm. He likes it hot. And I began to ask myself why we say the fire of the Holy Ghost and Satan runs away. But what I discovered about Satan shocked me. I discovered, which I'll teach you as we go on, that Satan was made of fire. Actually, angels have been, if you read the Bible, there are so many things that was used in creating Lucifer, but I don't want to go into how angels were created. But most, there is no angel that does not have a resemblance or an attribute of light. So there's some light in every angel. So if you read this scripture, which is 104 verse 4, and the writer of Hebrews also quoted in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7, he said he makes his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. Now you cannot be a minister of God if there is no fire within you, Satan will finish you. Angels, if you look at verse, is it verse 14 of this same scripture, the last verse of Hebrews chapter 1, you will see that angels are ministering spirits. But their passion and their desire for work is determined by the minister. It's not determined by the angel. So if I come and stand here and I'm cold and I'm lukewarm, is that that is how God will work in the atmosphere. So I, before you came here, you would have seen that I put John Maxwell's coat on the platform, Tim Bridge, where it said that as for your talent, it is God given, <laughs> but your character is a choice. I mean, the songs I'm going to sing, it can be that the Holy Ghost will not determine the songs that you sing. But I should know the songs that I can sing that will make him comfortable. Now, if I decide to sing a shall bow here right now, <laughs> as I lift the shall bow, automatically I invite certain spirits here. And automatically I allow certain spirits to be withdrawn out of this place. So as I stand here and I'm also ministering, a certain mindset comes into my head. In that same way, certain spirits come in and certain spirit goes out. So as he's ministering to me, through me, he can be able to minister also to you. So he said, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who inherit salvation? Now this is talking about angels. Maybe for you to understand it well, you need to read verse 13. So angels are ministering spirits. They are sent to... Okay, let's read. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Then he said, The angels are what? Ministering spirits. They are what? Well, let's preach together. They are what? But the verse, verse 7 said, I'm not talking about angels today. I'm talking about the minister. The minister, the one who is supposed to minister. The word minister is diconia. The one who is supposed to serve. Serve water. Lead prayer. Lead worship. Lead song ministration. Invite somebody to church. Usher somebody to sit down. Shake somebody's hand. 
talk to somebody, make somebody, must be a, a what? A flame of fire. Then I read my Bible and I realized that a lot of us could be under a curse. Can I have my lapel working? I, 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 maybe a lot of us could be under a, a curse because if God wants as ministers for us to become um, fire, if we read the Bible, you see that there are some people. Who, let's go to. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. Leviticus chapter ten. Yeah, Leviticus chapter ten, one and two. Some people assume that they were pastors' children, Nadab and Abihu. They assume that, oh, just like the sons of Skiva. Sometimes the people who take the taste of God for granted are those who are close by it. So they decided to, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, they took a censer and put fire in it. you have seen fire before how many colors are fire and which of the colors is very potent blue white is more potent than blue but the color of the fire do go and check your chemistry there or your faces i don't know which is which the color of the fire is also determined by the components that is burning what is burning determines the kind of fire. So the fire is not determined by the fire. You can put a, a red or orange green fire or whatever you call it, or red fire. But based on what it is burning, the color of the fire changes. And for you to understand this thing critically, anytime you need to offer a sacrifice to God, three or four things are needed. I mean, let's say three or four things are needed. Any sacrifice that must be given to God, number one, there must be a priest. There must be two. There must be a victim. Three, there must be an altar. And maybe there must be a fire. Depending on the kind of sacrifice. There must be a priest. There must be a victim. What is a victim? A victim is something that is replacing what you want. Okay, I want a house, so I'm sowing a seed. That seed is a sacrifice. It's the victim. I'm killing it to make me have what I want. So even with Jesus, and we are getting towards Easter, you will notice that Jesus could never have died until the priest said he deserves to die. Herod was not the one who sentenced Jesus. Read your Bible. Neither was a Pilate. Herod and Pilate, Herod beat him and wanted him to go. Pilate washed his hands and said, this man, I don't see anything evil. But a priest said, crucify him. It takes a priest to decide what must be sacrificed, if it not you. That is why God had to make all of us priests. So that as priests, we should know what we are offering to God. Am I teaching well? So it's not a man of God who is coming to tell you that sacrifice A, B, C, or D. You should know the kind of sacrifice you must give to God. So now, if you are sacrificing anything, it something must be a victim. Something must be a scapegoat. But there should be a priest. There should be an altar. And there should be, depending on the sacrifice, there should be a fire. So these people, they took the fire, they took the incense. That is Aaron's children. They are the priest. They've seen the father offering sacrifice every day. So they also decided to put the fire into the incense. And they took the incense and put the fire in it, put the incense on it, and offered profane fire. The Bible calls profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So the fire went out. Look, they offered fire, right? That you see that there's fire, there's fire. So God said, so fire went out from the Lord and devoured them. One of the things that always shocks me in the Bible is people who are doing things for God and God punishes them. Like the 
person who saw the ark falling says, let me help this ark. God said, how dare you help the ark? Can I have the best? I have to go back. And what did God do to the best? The ark goes to an unbelievers house. And the man is rich. The one who has served the house of God for all these years tries to touch it. God strikes him dead. What made Saul lose the kingship? He just went to town. Had to kill all the animals. Kill some. And brought some that he's going to use it to offer sacrifices later. And the command was kill them all. He said, someone asked him, have you killed everything? First Samuel said, he said, I have killed everything. Then, then Samuel said, then what is the bleaching of goat and sheep I hear outside? What was his motive? It was right motive. He wanted it well. But when it comes to God, it is not what you want. It's what he wants and how he wants it. out from the Lord. The same fire they offered to God, God I rejected. And devoured them and they died before the Lord. And I was surprised. Let's read verse 3. Moses called Aaron's cousins. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. The next one, look at the next line. Then Moses called Mishal and Elsma, the sons of Uzzah, the uncle of Aaron, they called their children. They should come and take Aaron, who is not even permitted to touch the children. Aaron is not permitted to even touch the children. And actually, if we don't, Aaron was told, don't cry. Everybody in the church can cry. Moses, you can't cry. Aaron, you can't cry. Why? If you cry, you will die also. And you look at this thing, you wonder. Why does God play with fire? Why is it that God has not joke with fire? Now, before, before the Holy Ghost came down, we saw Elijah commanding fire from heaven. And Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume him 50. And fire was come. But nobody had ever given a similitude of the person of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit being fire. But John came and said, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but you today and with fire. Now I've said it again that a lot of us have the Holy Spirit, but we don't have the fire of the Holy Spirit. Are they two different persons? No. They are the same persons, but it is generated. Just like there is the Holy Spirit and there is the power of the Holy Spirit. They are not the same, but they are the same. The same root. goes in the Holy Spirit, he comes back with power. Power is generated based on how much you overcome temptation. Power is generated based on how much you are going to overcome them to follow him. Last of the flesh, last of the eye, and pride of life. These were the three tests Jesus went through. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. He had Holy Spirit. So I've seen a lot of believers, I've seen a lot of Christians, they are Holy Spirit, but they have nothing. And Paul told Timothy, look for it for me, there are some who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power from such turn away. Anybody who says he's a Christian and that's operate in power, he's a fake Christian. No, there are people who come on radio and TV, Facebook, social media, and they're arguing Bible. I have power. I give Bible doesn't make you have Holy Spirit. He says, such from such 
turn away. And they have a form of godliness. Someone look for the scripture and give it to us in Timothy. And yet they deny the power thereof. And first Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20 says, The kingdom of God is not in word, but in the demonstration of power. Don't tell me you are Holy Spirit when you don't show me the sign of his power. As for married couples, I remember it. If you marry for two, three years, what do the society expect after two, three years? But children, so when you are not seeing children, they start getting married. So when you say you have the Holy Ghost and you can't show me where the power of the Holy Ghost is, then I have to. Hey, you are keeping long ago. Second, second Timothy 3 5. And I gave first Corinthians 4 20. Okay, give me from verse 4 first. If you start from verse 4, talk about the last is this. They, these are traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They love to chill rather than lovers of God. Let's go on verse 5. Having a form of godliness by denying his power from such people, turn away. You move away from them. Their yeah, Holy Ghost is very soon going to be fake. The Holy Ghost is soon going to break. Where's the next one? 420. The kingdom of God is not in the word. Say 420. One. One Corinthians. So let's go. As she's looking for me, let's go. So here is um, the day of Pentecost coming. John the Baptist has already prophesied that he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, one of the things that fire does is fire comes to determine the kind of work you are doing. What's happening to your PC? You are still having 2 Corinthians 4 2. I said 1 Corinthians 4 20. For the kingdom of God is not one in way. Jai Kasan. But power. Some say power. Yeah, you need this power. So anybody who would teach, who would teach, who would teach, 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 teach. Let me give an example. Maybe we think power is falling down. Let me give you a practical example. Pastor, whatever might teach you, you will never fall down. But if you apply to become rich, that is power. He said, I give you power to make wealth. Teachings that does not give results, it means that there's no Holy Spirit behind it. It's a professor training. You, you can go to school and learn, give part training and come and see three steps to this and come and teach it. It's given power. But you see, when the Holy Spirit is behind it, it generates and moves the person to begin to work towards a particular function. It pushes, it drives. I'm not talking to somebody here. So when I teach, I teach, I teach, and I see that I'm not getting results, I begin to get worried because is it that my Holy Spirit is wrong? Can I go on? Because it's not going to get deeper. So when John the Baptist said in Matthew chapter 3 that he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, you will see that Everybody was shocked. What kind of fire is coming down on us? And the day of Pentecost comes. The Bible said in Acts chapter 2, cleaving tongues of fire came upon their head and they began to speak in tongues. Now, a timid, a timid, I repeat, a timid Peter who days ago, just 50 days ago, one and a half months ago, a maid servant told him, are you a member of Bridgeman? He said, me, I, have, I can never be. Three times. He stands in front of thousands and says, this same Jesus whom you crucified is Lord. And 
And you wonder if you also say we have the Holy Spirit, what makes you timid? The Bible said in the book of Timothy again that God has not given them the spirit of fear or timidity but of love and sound mind. You can't tell me you have the Holy Spirit and there's a fear in you. You are timid. Is it James 2.13? I was teaching somebody this afternoon that one of the things people don't know about even demons, that demons have emotions. And the Bible said, demons tremble. If I'm not smart, I'll be quoting too much. Let me give that one to you. I said demons do what? Someone look for it for me. They tremble. It's still in the book of James. They tremble at the name of Jesus. They tremble. They fear and they tremble. Okay, let's read this one. Go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of what? 2.19. James 2.19. Of sound mind. So, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, now I want you to check your Holy Spirit statistics as a believer. I'm shy. I can't win so. Maybe I'm a fairy. <laughs> maybe you have the Holy Ghost. You've not generated it. You'll be, come to the level of the power of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you have the Holy Spirit, but you don't have the fire. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even demons believe and tremble. Tremble is a, a, an emotion. It's a shaking. It shakes them. It's, it, they, they, they tremble. Give me the Matthew 3 where that said he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Some say I need fire. Now, if fire comes upon a thing, it comes to determine the material a person is made of. Now, before I come to the material, please remind me that I'll talk about the material the person is made of. Let's look at Let's look at the composition of Lucifer. Have you found the baptism with? Uh, so let me have it. Let's look at that. I indeed baptize you with water. Your bow is on swim. Water baptism it makes you change. You repent. But when you repent and you don't go on to have the Holy Spirit, you will go back to sin. Then he said, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Some say fire. But the funny thing about fire is I'll move on, go to Ezekiel 28, is that fire I like the way John was able to separate the Holy Spirit. He didn't say Holy Spirit fire. It's a Holy Spirit and fire. Because you can have the Holy Spirit but I know <laughs> because every fire is maintained by sacrifice. Look for this scripture for me. The children kindled the wood and their fathers put in the fire. I've been using it a lot. Before you come, to, I, are you listening to me? I didn't never say Ezekiel 20. You. I said 28 by giving the wood and the fire. Are you with me? So, what happens to a lot of us like today? You come, let me give an example. You come to church, you hear the word, you change, you decide that I'm going to be serious for God, I'm going to pursue this vision, I'm going to consume this dream. Then you go and sleep, it will die. Why will it die? It can only go on if you start putting wood to it. You keep putting wood into the fire. You keep putting substance into the fire. Let's read. The children gather wood. Fathers kindle the fire. I ask your father, I can kindle your fire. I can awake your fire. But what you need to do is that you must put in wood. That is why in the, in the Bible, if you read the Bible, one of the things God used for Noah, Noah used acacia wood. 
which later in Exodus chapter 25, they call it an Exodus 30, the Shittim root. Shittim is S, not Shit, S H I W T I M. Shittim wood. It is an incorruptible wood, that kind of wood. No insect can chew it. That's what God used to do the temple and that's what noah used for the ark god was specific because god knows that if this boat will float this ship will float and insects chew water will go in so the higher the trouble the more the ark was floating higher the more the trouble will bring more flood the flood was killing people but no one was sailing higher <laughs> the more the flood was overcoming people's story buildings people's mountains Noah's ark was flying higher but there was only one thing if Noah had used a wrong wood then even some of the insects in the ark would chew that wood that wood was so bitter that no animal no insect would want to chew it and that is what God said they should also use for the ark why? we call it shitting wood incorruptible flesh That is why Jesus' body could not get rotten. Because he was the wood. That was around Noah's ark. And as long as he was the wood, the ark was not going to sink. He was the wood. That was put around the tabernacle. And as long as he was the wood, no animal, no devil. That's why I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So if you put the wrong material in building God's work, that is when the devil destroys it. You won't understand me. Amen. Your amen is not good at all. Your amen is not good at all. So should I go on? Now, so in Ezekiel chapter 28, let's look at some things about Satan, Lucifer. So that you see that Satan determines how sharp you are by the fire you carry. In Ezekiel 20 verse 14, let's look at Lucifer. And look at his life. Lucifer is called you are the anointed cherub. He was a cherubim. Who covers? He was a coverer. He was a protector. He was the one who was supposed to protect the glory of God. He was God's personal armor bearer. He doesn't allow any nonsense around God. I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of fairy stones. Now, this one didn't say it well. Give me original um, King James, not New King James. He walked on stones of fire. This man can walk on stones of fire, and nothing was happening to him. So which kind of fire are you bringing against him? This is who can walk on a stone on fire. Actually, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, who can put a fire on his lap and it will not burn? The man walks on fire. So if somebody like that walks on fire, if he sees artificial fire, he's happy. <laughs> An artificial fire is welcoming. The guy had fire actually. Satan had two things. The more, but Satan had two things that was his body. He had light. Actually, the Bible called him the angel of light. And some people say that God is light. God is not light. Light is one of the attributes of God. You, you can't describe the person. So, so we say his light. So we say God comes down like fire. He's not fire. One of his attributes is that. Can a man put fire in his bosom and enclose and it will not burn? It will burn. But this man walked on fire. Who can try it? And it won't burn him. So he knows fire. He knows the levels of fire. When your fire is artificial, he knows. And God also knows when you're, man of God, you see, it has touched my heart. I've committed my, And God knows that nothing has touched your heart. It's a girl you want in church. God knows. You say something. Not yet. And 
if God can look at the strange fire that Nadab and Abihu provided and finish them, I don't know how many people have been finished by God, but we don't know. And Satan was somebody who walks on fire. Then I asked myself, then, if this guy walks on fire, how come God says that he will create fire here for Satan to live in? What kind of fire is God putting Satan in? And when we say, I bind the devil, let the Holy Ghost fire come. What kind of fire comes from witches that they get tormented and run away? Which fire is that? Give me verse, no, verse 15 will take us too far. Give me verse 17. The guy walks up and down on fire. When God wants to destroy you, he takes something he has given you, the same thing he gave you, and he uses it to finish you. <laughs> thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thy heart. Now let me tell you this. Be careful when you are beautiful, when you are handsome, when you have gifts, when you have talents. It's a good one to have. Thy heart was lifted up. Why was his heart lifted? I'm the one who covers. I'm the one who does this. If not me, this one will not happen. If not me, this one will not happen. I'm the best of that. I'm the this of that. I'm the that of that. <laughs> Thou has corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness unto this light. The same light he had was corrupted because he thought he was wise. I will cast thee to the ground and I will lay before the kings that they may behold thee. I will put you down and raise kings that will look at your shame. Now let's look at the next one. 18. Thou hast defiled Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy what? iniquities. By the iniquities of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth fire from the midst of thee. So he said, there is some fire in you. That same fire that makes you. You have to be a fire to walk in fire. So he said, I will take the fire that is in you. Such that now that fire that is in you will be the one that will torment you. God, you see, let me tell you this. After creation, God didn't have to create anything again. Anything God wants to do is in something. He said, I'm going to take the fire in you. That same passion you should have for God that used to chase guests, chase money, chase women. Somebody can be around the whole day, the whole day, not occupied. As soon as it's time for service, that's when they remember there's something they have to do in town. <laughs> it's serious, so they don't, they never remember there's something to do. As soon as it's time for God's work, then they remember, hey, I should have done this, let me go and do it. What were you doing that at that time? Now, see, read it. Can I have? NLT to this. This place is too serious. He said, you defiled your sanctuaries with your many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you and it consumed you. I will reduce you to the ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching you. So what did God use to destroy Satan? The very thing he gave him that made him walk on fire. And God tells you, you think you are fire, eh? I will use this same fire to put you in hell forever. You will suffer the fire that should make you passionate. Now you have that same passion, but it will be directed towards it. And that is why I had a, um, a, read a story about someone who said, he went to hell. And when the person said it, I was wondering. He said, when he went to hell, well, me, I've not gone to hell before and heaven before. But I was wondering, but after reading this, I realized that the person could be right. He said, if you are in hell, if you are fornicating a lot, when you go to hell, you will fornicate and you can't stop. He said, okay, so then let me go. Let me take it. And you know that that is the reason why you are suffering. So you want to stop it. But you can't stop. 
So you know that your the day you can stop it, you can go to heaven. You can change your life. You can become better. And you see others enjoying. You see others at peace. You see others so successful. So whatever you were enjoying on that same thing, God will use you to torment you. So Michael Jackson will play that is music and be dancing. He wants to stop. He can't stop. He wants to stop. He's still doing it. What? Say, he was not, he wants to stop. He can't stop. He can't even stop to eat. He can't even stop. He wants. To, and at this time, that thing you feel that is bad. You feel it's shameful. You feel it's not good. You feel it should not have done it. But you are doing it. And if people are watching, won't you stop so that we can talk to God to give you mercy? No. The Bible said in Romans that is it Romans or First Corinthians professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So somebody said, then I'll fornicate. So I'll go to hell, I'll continue to fornicate. That is interesting. That even shows your mindset. I will sin. So I'll go to hell. Meshi san says she no. It's a It's like at that time. You have conscience. So you know that this thing is the reason why you are suffering. Now, let me move from there. But my issue is that, why will God take, he didn't go and bring fire from somewhere. He said, I will take fire from the midst of you. You walk on fire. The fire doesn't torment you. The fire doesn't harm you. You are all alone. Satan, when we read the verse 14, he said he is the brightness of God, right? Now, God, how did God that way? And the light shines in the darkness, and the dark Satan doesn't like light. This is the guy who was light, he was made with light. Why is it that most of you, when angels get into a place, the place becomes brightened and they pull down? The glory of the light around them is such that nobody can look at them. So if this is it, how come John 1 5 and the light shines in the darkness and in darkness? The same light that he had. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a very example. God forbid. You see me standing here. If let's take it that God is decided to use me and I decided to mess up with God. God will take somebody who doesn't matter. The person will do what I am doing. Eh? He will do it so well that I wonder how come I could not do it. And that one is so painful because you know that I should have been the one to do it. You know why Satan doesn't like man? Because whatever you lift up worship, you remember Satan that that was his duty in heaven. And a <laughs> you, you don't you don't get him because you see you said I will do it, and now he's taking it from him. He said, "Man, worship me." One of the things Satan will always beg for is worship. He begs for it. What did he want from Jesus? He took him to the mountain. He said, worship me and I'll give you everything you see. He just wanted Jesus to bow down. He just wanted Jesus to bow down. He was, going, he was ready to lose everything if Jesus would bow down to him. I don't care. And that's one thing I like about demons. They don't care their position. <laughs> He doesn't care if you, you, you throws away some of these demons as long as Jesus bows to him. He'll make Jesus the next in command. He doesn't care about all the other demons. You'll be the next in command. Let's, let's control the world together. Let's leave God out. So God is light. And him, is, the Bible says, there's no variable of darkness. There's no darkness in God at all. But Satan was light. Now the question to ask is this question. Simple. What is it in you that God needs that you can easily do, but you will not use it for God? That God might take and use it against you one day. I'm mm-hmm. because traffic. Some were bought in more shape. People like to look at me and they crash their car. Is that so? How did that benefit God? Can we go back to the scripture? He took, said, I will take fire from the midst of you.
And when I take it, okay, let's read again. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou was corrupt. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay thy thee before the kings that they may behold thee. And see, one of the things I like about God, I don't like, but it's God. When God is embarrassing you, he embarrasses you publicly. He makes everybody see it. He said, I'll let everybody see it. I let everybody see. The Bible actually says, don't take us the Colossians, that when Jesus met Satan, he made a public show of him. He defeated him for everybody to see. Oh, God, Jesus beat Satan and made sure that principalities, powers, witches and wizards, they all saw it. So that Jesus would not go and yob, the, the devil would not go and yob them when Jesus goes down. Yeah, I'm a born, I'm a born, I'm a born, I'm a born, I beat him. He made sure that they all saw that Satan was beaten. After that, he told him, don't try again. Then he took the keys from him. He could have taken the key without beating but he beat him or oh, you think it's not should I show it to you isn't should I show it okay he put them to a plea I mean Colossians in chapter one he put them to a plea open um, um, radical he just embarrassed Satan you see Pastor Bomas if God forbid if I, you beat me in the room hmm, and we come here and I clean my face and I said, oh, don't mind him. I beat him. And because you are here in public, you just say, it's true. He beat me. He beat me. But the truth is that you are beating me. Satan is behaving as if he's powerful. But all the demons, there's a message, I think Reverend Easton about preached it in one of his books. He said, Satan has a complex. He makes it look like he has won. But God has beat, Jesus has beat him so well that he, he his lieutenant, his associates, everybody know that he has been defeated. Have you found it? Colossians 2.15 uh, huh. May God not reduce us to ashes. Your amen is not good at all. And having spoke principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, tramping over them in it. He, he showed, he beat them open. Open beating. And the Bible said, open rebuke is better than secret love. So he, he made sure that he made Satan. So when, <laughs> let me not go there because I will change my meeting. I will change the teaching. So having spoke principalities and powers, he, what? he made a show of them openly. Give me the new King James. In other words, you say he made a public show of them. Public. Yeah, this one says what? Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them. Trampled over them in it. He made a spe- what? A public spectacle. Am I talking to somebody here? So let's go back to verse 17 of um, the, no, verse 18 of ah. Am I teaching well? Yeah, I know you don't like it, so let's go. Let's read again. You defy your uh-huh. with what? Your many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes as a ground in the sight of all who were watching. Now let me prove something to you. How did God destroy Lot? Uh, sorry. How did God destroy The picture just came on. So The Bible said, as soon as the oil came on, David, 1 Samuel 16, an evil spirit from the Lord tormented Saul. Now, does the spirit of God torment? No. So what happens is that all the demons you've beaten, all the principalities you have conquered, God doesn't have to attack you. He just has to do this. Now you are powerless. <laughs> and they will remember how you used to beat them. Now 
No, go up, cry. And how did God simply do? The same kingly anointing that was on Saul. had lifted and gone to somebody who was now operating as a king. So physically, there was a king who was on the throne. But in the spiritual realm, he was not a king. So because he was not a king, he was still operating as a king, he was having attacks that only kings can solve. And unfortunately, the David who had gotten the anointing, who even playing guitar can, can make you correct. He wanted to kill the person. You see how that thing is. The very person who can, if, look, I heard Pastor Charles said something last time, I think it was very true. Take your seat. Now, when God, God says, you shall have thrown you away, you are no more to be king. Interestingly, David is interested in your daughter. So if you agree and they marry, at least your daughter is the queen. So still the hereditary is one way or the other there. The thing tormented him to the extent that he began to chase the one who can even help him. Sometimes you are destroying your own opportunities, your own breakthrough. Why? Because the assignment you need to do, grace has been lifted from you. And when grace is lifted, you don't see it. I've taught you this before. When God wanted to destroy, kill, I've taught you this. When Aaron and Miriam misbehaved towards Moses, <laughs> because of the office of Aaron, nothing happened to him. But God one day just said, Aaron, go to the mountain and let them remove your office robe from you. As soon as the rope was removed and um, it was put on Eliezer, the guy died. So one thing I've thought, and I'll keep saying that, the thing about God is that there is nothing like coming in and going out. If you come, you have come. I know you say amen. Oh, are you here? You are not here. If you come, you are the one. You have come. Not that you come and say, I, mean, I, mean, I have regretted. You, have, you, you, can't, you can't enter the palace and go. You have seen too much in the palace for you to go alone. Outside the palace, nobody likes you. That is why every former president is protected. Because once you were president, you fought certain battles. And in, if you don't have that protection, the people, even though you are still not president, they will come after you. So now let me ask you a question. What is it that Nabdab and Abihu went to offer to God? Some say process. I didn't hear you say what? I didn't hear you. Don't assume that proximity to the anointing makes you know. Don't think that, okay, I'm close, so I know. That thing has killed many people. Now, maybe you won't die like some of them who died. But certain areas of your life ceases to function. How? <laughs> what kind of fire was Aaron using? Now, I don't have time to teach you. Year, days or whatever before God told them when they built the ark God brought fire upon the altar and when God brought the fire it was the duty of the sons of the prophets or the sons of the priest every day they must put fire in it to keep the altar always burning are you with me but what they did was that they went for fire maybe from their house eja bia eja they brought fire. There's fire in my house. Let me bring some and use it. So let me teach you this. Many people have gotten strange fires. And that strange fire 
is what has killed their ministry. If your fire dies, one of the things you need is you go to somebody who still has fire and let a person lay hands on you, pray with you, encourage you. Deep, call it to deep. Iron, sharpen it, iron. You don't go and find another kind of fire. And present it to God. First Corinthians chapter 3. It says that every man's work will be determined by fire. There is no person, there is no foundation that anybody will lay other than the foundation of Christ. But every man should be careful what and how he builds on the foundation. After the foundation, God will never allow you to take it. He will build the foundation. Because why is God who builds the foundation? Because he, the foundation determines how far the team goes. And you can determine the longevity of a thing. It is God. But the material to use, it is your choice. So, let's imagine that you start building your own way. Oh, you are still looking for first Corinthians chapter 3. You start building your own way. God wants to find out. Let me use, let me, let me be very frank. Let me, let me use one particular example. So you are doing basenta. You are winning souls. What we tell you to do, you are not doing it. You have a formula. It's building. You have hundred people. Praise God. One day, one kokonsa comes. One kokonsa. One kokonsa. It breaks down the whole basenta. Now nobody comes. It's left with you. Ah, what happened? Yeah, you had artificial fire artificial growth go up now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay or straw look at the materials let's look at the materials number one is what gold silver precious stone wood hay or straw yeah oh let me just do it you are building Look, I'm, I've been in ministry long enough. I've seen churches that came and within one year, two years, they were the church of the moment. <laughs> and after two, three years, we don't find them again. I've seen it. I've seen it. And I can tell you this, that every church you see have a look at me. That is mega in this world. These are some of the things I can tell you about. The number one, the pastor has preached for over twenty years. <laughs> you don't know by. Number two, his associates has been with him for no less than twenty years. The same associates. Number three, most of them started preaching when they were in their twenties. Mention the names: Bishop Dag, Pastor Chris, Oyadepo, Pauline Neche. You mention them, I'll tell you. <laughs> Pastor Tabo, Archbishop, you mention them, and then look at our own generation. Because you see, the thing is that every three, four years, five years, let's read verse 13. Let's go. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. <laughs> just like he entered Lucifer and brought something out. Then some character in you will just come. <laughs> And when he comes, all of a sudden, say, ah, where are the loyal people? Where are the faithful people? I see the man he went to meet and say, all the people he has raised has vanished. He, the man he went to meet, he said, all the people you raised, they've gone. They will go. They will go. Let me tell you, if you build artificial, oh, 
For the day will declare because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort of it. The fire, the fire of God. You see, the fire of the Holy Ghost is not just for you to speak in tongues and be zealous and be pious and be whatever. It also comes to determine. So, very soon, you see that things have gone back to class one. I'm tired. I'm tired. If you don't want to be tired, go the way God wants you to go. When the fire comes, where you are, you will still be there. You will still be building upon it. You will still be building upon it. You still be building upon it. But if you, people think that there is a shortcut in Christianity, I beg you, there has not been a shortcut. If there is a shortcut, Jesus won't die. He will just be there and say, children, saved! Because he is God. Anything he wants is possible. But it was impossible. He had to die. He had to do what? God has to what? Die. Why? Because it was not in his domain. I was teaching you this that Satan is not the most powerful demon or fallen angel. There are powerful ones that the book of Jews says they have been changed unless we will all backslide. God even knows that if he release those, they are more exclusive as any Timor. Lucifer is just cool. <laughs> some, some are so wicked. Some say fire. So now, if you are then a believer and you don't have any fire in you, true, 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 you are not of God. What does fire do? Fire keeps you on your toes. Is it true? It's not true. Fire, that's what? It keeps you on your toes. Fire is what gives you desire. Fire is what makes the raw material become usable. And God doesn't give you usable products. He gives you raw materials. <laughs> I don't believe in shift cultivation or move somebody and put it here. No, you come, you have to go through fire. You pass through class one, class two, class three, class four, class five. Why? Why do you have to go through it? It's a fire test. I see pastors who do this. I have a friend who called me and said, some pastors as, want to be associate pastors in Bridge. I asked them, okay, where, where are they? They said they are in Ablikuma there. I said they should not come. So, Pastor, I said, if they were from East Legon, I would say they should come. So, well, Pastor, how? I said, Ablikuma, they pass here every day. If they look at the building, they will have to be pastors here. If it's East Legon, they don't know what I'm building. You, when you are passing, success has a way of making with, hey, And most of such people, they are not there to work on, they are there for their success. And when God wants to test them, know what God will test them. He will test them with success. No money for salary. <laughs> no money for salary. Actually, I've come to realize that anything God claps for you on, be ready for fire. You are the best soul winner. Run away, prepare for fire. You are the most loyal person. Prepare for fire. It wasn't it the same thing that God said that Job, there is nobody like Job. Satan said, you are lying. Job's own is because you have protected him, because you are covering him. He's always close to you. You're always praying for him. You always give him what he wants. If you like, stop all those things and see if Job will not curse you. <laughs> so, the very reason why God said he's good is the reason why he was going to go through torment. Let me give you another example. Do you think that if David was not supposed to be a king, his family would be in trouble? His family was enjoying themselves somewhere. After killing Goliath, Saul hates him. His wife is even taken away from him. 
Saul is looking for him and his, um, his children, his father, his uncle, anybody in his bloodline to kill. So David has to now move to the cave of Adron, first Samuel chapter 22, and stay there and go to give his family to the king of Moab and then go and behave like a madman in the, oh God, in, in the house of the Philistine. The very Goliath he killed, they embraced him, the Goliath family embraced him. Meanwhile, the very people he saved were rejecting him. The same thing that is to build you is the same thing that will fight you. <laughs> and many run away from it. If you want to cut through meta, you need what? You need what? Fire or you need meta. That dear bitch that dear. If you are wood, anything can break you down. But God doesn't like wood, hay, straw. That one is enough for Satan to pull you down. And if I'm David, I'll ask God, where is the calling you've called me? What, what is this? Is this how to become king? Is that the palace you promised me? This is not palace. Cave of Adullam. You made me spend only some few days in Saul's palace. Now look at my life. <laughs> and that is the time if there's true fire in you. The fire doesn't give up. Fire is a bad master. <laughs> but a good servant. If you control fire, it will help you. If you leave fire, it will destroy you. What made Saul bring a curse on Israel? The Bible says, in his zeal for the Lord, as they give him, give her the scripture. In his zeal for the Lord, he killed the Gibeonites, breaking a covenant. He broke a covenant because he was zealous for God. <laughs> but God didn't care. You are zealous for me. But you're broken the covenant. Gibeonite came in. You had a covenant with him. And you are zealous. You have broken it. David becomes king. And for the next three years, there is hunger. And it is believed that when it rains, it rains acid. And David goes to inquire of the Lord, what have I done wrong? And God says, it's not for what you've done. It's for the house of Saul. In his zeal, he killed innocent people. No, it's Second Samuel. Look at something say fire. I didn't hear you. Now, do you know what makes you come to church late? Lack of fire. So, let me give you an example. When God wants you to pray, it's simple. He just let Satan visit you small. I don't know what I'm talking about. When business start going bad, Things start going wrong. Nobody tells you to wake up at dawn. You see, brother Ma, he charge. Why didn't you keep that fire charging throughout the year? Does it take trouble to charge you? I will take the fire in you. And the king called the Gibeonite. Oh, go up. Now there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, it is for the soul, for his blood house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, now the Gibeonites were not the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal. His zeal, the same fire. I don't know if you have fire. Where is your fire? I don't know if you think your fire is dead. You mind me. 
your fire is dead when you don't sacrifice for God again. Everything you do is at your convenience. Minya timer. If I get the time. God will get your time. Don't worry. Did you find out if he has a car? I have not found out. Eh? You've kept too long. Carry up. Where was I? Where was I before I asked the question? You stop sacrificing. You stop sacrificing. How many of you still sacrifice for God? Please, if I say sacrifice, I'm, please, I'm not talking about money. Man is the least of sacrifices. When you do what you have to do, when you have to do it, instead of how you want to do it and when you want to do it, when you do it your way, it is not a sacrifice. Let me teach you this. Let me use some as an example. If I tell you to pray and you you get up to pray. Let's say that you are there and you feel like today they will pray. You will get answers. No problem. But if I tell you some pray and pray at this time and you pray at the time I give you. You know what happens? You automatically have my grace on you. Because at this rate, you are doing what I told you to do. So you and I become one in dealing with the issue. But when you, you decide that I will pray, when I want to pray, your God must come and save you. I know you tell me that Master Jairof, in a frame. <laughs> Let me tell you, this. it's true. God has called all of us. Yeah? God has called all of us. But whether you like it or not, some are loved by God and some are not loved by God. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Number two, there are some people who have called themselves and there are some people who God has called them. There are some people, they saw a problem in church and they saw that God, I can solve this. And there are some people, God had to change that with a king. How many times do you see God chasing somebody like Noah? Hey, sorry, Jonah. Many people, if you want to answer God's call, pass your somewhere. Who shall I send? Who will go? God says, Jonah, whether I like it or I'll chase you in the ship. Can't God get anybody to go to Jonah? To, to, in fact, uh, Jopa. Can't he get anybody? When Saul messed up, didn't you get David? Jonah says, You won't go. Leave him alone. Say, Oh, Wherever you go, I will chase you there. So there are some people who <laughs> are you sure you've gone somewhere? Are you sure you are here? Now you, you realize something. Look, let me give you this. I think I made some notes somewhere. Open your Bibles with me too. I pray this in this note. <laughs> I pray, I pray, I pray, I can't find it, but I'm not finding it, but let me go on. <laughs> let me give you a bit about covering. Some say covering. Say covering. Now, why am I talking about it? See, Lucifer was the anointed cherub and he had a covering. He was the one to take all the bullets, all the arrows, all the attacks. And so when somebody who is supposed to take the arrow and the attacks decide to be the attack, <laughs> it means that the front line is totally off. Is it true or is it not true? 
Oh, is it true or is it not true? Now, he decided not to cover. But when he decided not to cover, what did God have to do? God has to quickly get a covering. And guess what? There were three major archangels. How many? Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. As soon as he decided to do whatever, God just say, Michael, you put go and fight. And God just took fire like this. And the fire, he put it in a place called hell. And said, this place is waiting for you. If you've not tried to cast out demon before, try this. Whenever you mention fire of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> they don't like it. They don't like fire. Why don't they like fire? Because that was what they used to enjoy. They walked on it. They used to enjoy it. Now, why did should I teach this? Why did Lucifer rebel against God? I've taught you this, but let me go higher. What did he say? I will ascend above. I will I will do what I want to do. I will do this. Me too, I'm powerful. Me too, I'm this. Me too, I'm that. Me too, I'm that. Me too, I'm that. But there was a little thing in him that God can get out to finish him. And that was called fire. Now let me ask you a question before I move on. Do you have your fire? Yes. I'm listening to you. Do you have your fire? Let me move on. If your fire has to burn, can it burn for three hours? Please, learn, young guys, eh? how many of you think your fire can burn for three hours? Two days non stop. One year. One of my sons, those days, Piki came to sleep in my room. He slept, woke up, went to Wiwi, came back to the room, tried to pray with me. He slept, woke up, I'm still praying. He got up in the morning and said, Ah, old man, do you sleep? And I said, I sleep. Then he was like, I sleep, I wake up, I sleep, I wake up, you are still praying. Then I asked him, Why couldn't you pray? So I've been praying. So can you move on? He said, He has finished praying. He has finished praying. You know what I told him? He has finished praying because the kind of assignment I have. And the kind of fire I must keep. His assignment and my assignment are not the same. When your neighbor is praying two minutes prayer, please don't compare yourself to your neighbor. Because his assignment and your assignment are not the same. Obi to twin bro. Obi to twin bro. What's what was today? Monkey. <laughs> Are you with me? Somebody is cooking for himself to eat. You, you are cooking for 10,000 people. How do I know you are cooking for 10,000? The last time, oh God, he kapata. Lord, let my ministry be 10,000 fold. 10,000 fold. Lord, I am tired of chopping 100 grand cities a day. Lord, take my salary to $100,000. And I'll praise you. $100,000. Praise be to God. You have to increase your threshold. No problem. Now, your bank charges are higher. I 
I was teaching some of you this. Some of you were not here. No. Is it Wednesday or whatever? Why I taught you that? Genesis thirteen ten. Genesis thirteen fourteen. Ten. First thirteen ten. First. Let's read go. And Lord lifted up his and beheld all the plain of Jordan that he was well watered. Who asked him to lift his eyes? Who asked him to lift his eyes? He himself. Now look at read it again. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan. It was well watered very well before the Lord the Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. In other words, he saw it like the place was like God's garden, garden of Eden. He saw it like that. Now look at verse 14. It is one thing to be told, and it's one thing to do. It's one thing to decide. And the Lord said to Abraham, Somebody has told him. Lift up now. After Lord has separated, he said, "Lift up now and look. Look at where. He, what? Look at it. It looks like the same thing. Look. Lift up now eyes and look from. Lord chose where He wanted. Abraham was giving what God wanted. Who survived? Why? Because God gave it to him, he had a covering. And I like what God said. He said, lift up your eyes from. Don't look here. You are limited from here. From here to. And where you see, I will give it to you. You are wondering why you get into certain problems and you don't come out easily. In the Bible, any time any patriarch, I repeat, any time any patriarch encountered God, the first thing they did was to build an altar. Any time. Today, somebody did something, I was shocked. Some people. Look, sometimes traditional people know things. I was there and this elderly woman who comes to church. Sunday, first service, her family came to testify. She booked an appointment to meet me. I was wondering what this elderly woman has to come and say. She came, sat down. He said, Pastor, I came here to inform you that my daughter has given birth. So, I know they've told me. So, no, no, no. But I want to tell you. They told me, I'm an elderly woman. I know how to do this. So, I came personally to inform you that. Uh, so, the day your daughter was about, I was sitting here. She was lying. I said, yeah, My daughter told me that she was lying here. She came to greet you. We're sitting here praying and all. But I have come to come and tell you. Say, hey, mommy. You know something? When she was, that's why I put something on the Tim Bridge. It's the thing some of my, my special father has been sending me. Was the instruction to get a thing could be different from the instruction to maintain a thing. So when you get an instruction to get a thing and you think you have arrived, know that the next instructions to maintain it is not the same. Satan had all the anointing. But how he had to humble himself, he needed to be taught. And maybe if you had gone to God and told God that, please, this beauty, this glory is killing me. I 
Are you with me or you are not with me? Oh, but you see, when I was praying, the Lord showed me. Wow. I'm not saying the Lord will not show you. The Lord will show you. But when the Lord shows you, sometimes what the Lord has shown you, how you understand it, and how the top understand it are opposite. I don't understand this until I grew up. David, you are going to war. Saul gives you his weapon. You say you don't like. The following day, you go and wear his son's weapon. Why did you refuse the weapon for war? You now chose a weapon that would not take you to war. You should have won the weapon for war. David knew that he cannot put his leg in a father's shoe, but he can put his leg in his equal's shoe. Even though he needed it most, he knew that he should not have it. You are quiet. It doesn't make sense what I said. You are sitting on a chair. An elderly person comes. He says, oh, please sit down. He says, I will not sit. Oh, if you don't sit. And you are seated and you are talking to him. So, I do not see on pet. On pet, dear. Miss my brain, make me see. I was teaching you the last time and I'll be ministering verses. Be on the keyboard for me. If you look at David, God said your hand is soiled with blood. You can't build a temple. If it is me, praise the Lord. He calls Solomon. Solomon, I'm not qualified, but you are don't kill anybody. This is the wood. This is the gold. This is everything. Still build it. I can't, but it's your gift to build. Now, if it is me that I'm going to give a sacrifice and God says that, oh, it's okay, don't bring it. Praise the Lord. You know what it means? In the first place, it was not in your heart. When Dave, sorry, when, what's his name? Jacob decided to go and give a blessing to his brother Esau. He went to Esau and Esau said, I am rich. I am successful. I don't need your money. Then he saw to, they come to him that yeah, I'm not bringing it because you are poor. I'm bringing it because as my elder brother, I need to do it. And I always say that he had made a vow to God to bring his tithe. And he paid it to Esau. The one who even, if it is today, I will never give it to an Esau. But you know what? That pacified Esau so much that Esau was at peace with him. You are quiet here, pal. I'm not talking well. Today, there's no calamity. Praise the Lord! No <laughs> Daddy said he's only meeting ministers and pastors. And, ha! In that day, this way, famous. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just, I'm sorry. Moses goes to the tabernacle to pray, and Joshua is with him. When Moses leaves to go and spend time with his wife and children, Joshua still stays in the tabernacle, stays on the mountain top praying. What my father couldn't finish, I'm finishing. God looked at Moses and said, Call Joshua, lay hands on him, and impart unto him wisdom. Let them say that no church service on Sunday. See how you jubilate. Sometimes you come to church, the pastor forgets offering. Say, God, you have answered my prayer. Oh, 
Is it true or is it not true? I didn't hear you. Tomorrow we will break the fast in our homes. So let me finish all of it today. And that's what I was teaching you. I don't know which thing was that. Most of you were not here. Let me just summarize all of it. Someone say his face, his hands, his feet, his heart. Say his face, his hands. Most people come to God because they want his hands. What do they want? Bless me. Give me this. And I said, he can give you everything you have. <sighs> One woman of God, that to me, God should never have used is Catherine Coleman. Somebody who married somebody's husband. Long nails. Red lipstick. This God we serve is a funny God. Forgive me. And you cannot talk about power without this woman. Why? Because you see, the Bible said when we see him, someone says see him. I think we see him. He said when we see him, we shall know him. We shall be like him. The only way to live well for God is for you to see God. To see him. I don't know if you have seen God before. Michael, is that how you sleep at home? Uh, you should have continued your honeymoon if you knew you are coming to sleep. Moses says, I want to see your face. And God said, No one can see my face and live. Because the day you see his face, face you must be dead. And Tony Ego is shake a clock. There is nobody in the Bible who saw God's face and live an ordinary life. But I taught you again the best was David. He was not just after his face. It was after his heart. And as long as it was after his heart, he could get his hand. He could get his face. He could get his leg. Now, we in church these days, when we come to church, what do we want? Actually, you join departments because you won't break through. Actually, you have become a son and a daughter because you want a covering. I wanted to do with covering, but I'm moving from there. I have one day with the that. But look at someone say, do you have his heart? I didn't hear you. What did you say? Okay, let me ask all of you a question. How many of you here have my heart? You think you have my heart? I don't know if you have God's heart. I want to give you a practical study about heart. God's heart. When God cries, do you know? Does God cry? Does God have a problem? When you have somebody's heart, he does not have to open his mouth to say anything. You just know. You see, as soon as I start talking about face, heart, me has changed the song and it's playing a particular music. 
because he was there when I was teaching this and he knows the music to play. And that changes the atmosphere automatically. How? He had to know what I wanted. When you have God's heart, you naturally know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. If a move of God passes you by, it is most likely they know his heart. And I'll summarize on this. In the move of God that is coming, which is the apostolic move, God is not going to give people his hand. It is his heart and his face. If you conform to his image, certain things naturally will happen to you. And you can never conform to his image if you have not seen him. Catherine Coleman had a very bad problem which was she prayed for somebody who was a strip dancer. The person got healed of cancer. The following day, the person went to strip dancing. <laughs> it's normal. But in an apostolic movie, it doesn't happen like that. How can I be in my house and pray for somebody and the person gets it. Wendy, you brought me your friend I said I should chat. She's telling you I'm not minding her. Oh, she's not old. Yeah, she sent a message. I replied. I have not replied again until this evening. Those days, I would have quickly replied. Her problem, I just know what to do. But in this move, let me tell you, I realize that how many of you want fast answers to prayers from a man of God? Take your seat. It's two things. Either you touch his heart or he touches your heart. It's a heart condition. If his heart is right with you, it's easy. What is the heart? So I stand here I'm not laying hands on anybody. And I say, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. And people are feeling it. What's the difference? First, I had to lay hands. It's a touch, physical touch. Now I speak. In the apostolic move, you've got to speak. And if you've got to speak, there must be a touch. And the touch must not be a hand. The touch must be heart to heart. So we are, we, are in, we are in a dispensation where people will get miracles in church that the pastor doesn't know anything about. The pastor doesn't know anything. It's not because he has fasted and prayed, no. It's because the person has touched the heart. Like the woman with the issue of blood. She decided to touch Jesus. She said she decided to touch him. She decided. I was teaching you about this. Can you leave the keyboard? Up? Can, can you get part sander? Isaac says, Bring me something to eat, and my heart or my soul will bless you. Well, he spoke words, but the words must be from the heart. Bring me something to eat that I desire, I want. And most of any time you have to touch a heart, you don't do it the way you want. You do it the way he wants. So if you read, is it Genesis 27? I've forgotten. I said, bring me venison such as I love. 
what I want, how I want it. So when you want to touch God's heart, you don't do what you want. You do what he wants. Why? Clement, if God tells you to stand here, you are still standing here. I said, God tells you to stand here. You are still standing there. Everybody can laugh at you. Everybody can mock you. Now, sometimes God can wait for everybody to laugh at you and mock you. You know why? What will touch God is their mocking of you. The more they mock you, the more God says, I'm going to show them that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you'll be wondering, why are they mocking me? God, you are not defending me. He won't defend you because you are just standing there, but you are not touching his hand. You have obeyed. But now people are insulting you that where is your God? Why is your God not defending you? Then God just carries you like this and puts you in a place that he has chosen for you. Then the people will mock you, looks at you and say, ah! And you yourself, you don't know why God has done this for me. But the truth is that the way people insulted you, abused you, and you still decided, like Job, to be faithful to God, then God said, your attitude has touched my heart. Because normally, nobody can stand that. I'll give you two testimonies on it physically. Two, just two. One day, Auntie Rose came to tell me that he met old church members who laughed at him. Hey. And said, Are you still at bridge? He said, Yes. If you don't leave, you won't give birth to when she told me, I've been praying for her. I told her from today, every Thursday, come and meet me in my office. <laughs> Special deliverance, me and you. To cut a long story short, she gave birth. And Tiaki came to do the same thing. The family called her. Hey, baby, ah, baby, ah, oh, papa, baby, ah, papa. I look at Antiaki. I pray for Antiaki and I realize that the dispensation she's in and the grace she's in, she can't handle what is coming. So we transfer it to the daughter. Now hear me. A lot of the times, most of us, we allow people to take us out of what would have touched God. Is it true? It's not true. No, it's not true, right? You are working as if this work is your father's work. You get up in the morning, church, afternoon, church, evening, church. Is it church you eat? And you stop. Why? You don't want to eat church. Every major miracle I got, I can trace it to a time I was mocked. I, I can trace it to a time I was mocked for doing something for God. People mocked me, laughed at me, and I just kept my cool. And during that time, when you are crying, those tears, they naturally come out without a noise. How do you know what I'm talking about? And God sees that tear and said, you have touched my heart. I want you to do a sacrifice today. I'm not talking about a sacrifice of money or a sacrifice of time. I want you to give God a sacrifice that God, what can I do to touch your heart? What do you love me to do? Lucifer, God loved him to do something. And he chose to do it for himself. He decided to cover himself. He 
he decided to cover himself, protect himself, guide himself. Make me sovereign meat such as I love. Bring it to me that I may eat it, that my soul or my heart will bless you. And when the other guy came late, <laughs> he told you that brother, I have blessed him. I have blessed him. I have blessed him. I have blessed him. And nothing can take it. I have blessed him. <laughs> it cannot be written. Close your eyes with me, please. And I want you to talk, God, God, I want to touch your heart. How do I touch your heart? How can I touch your heart? I'll continue this message. I've not exhausted it in my spirit. How can I touch your heart? Yes, you need a fire. But you must touch his heart. How can I touch your heart? David always found a way. He always found a way to touch God's heart. He, this man... When God expected him to behave like Adam and Eve by blaming somebody, he said, Lord, it's my fault. God said, no, that's crazy. It's your fault. And he was a sincere person. He was not saying it's my fault out of anger. He was so sincere, it's my fault. It's my fault. Someone is giving something to him to offer it to God as a sacrifice. He said, no, 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 no. You can't pay for it. I'll pay for it myself. I'll not give God anything that will cost me nothing. Something must touch me to touch God. He always found a way to touch God's heart. In his wilderness, he was worshiping. In his brokenness, he was worshiping. He sent men to get him water from Bethlehem. They brought the water. He looked at the water and said, I can't drink this with this water. He poured it to God. God said, come on. Come on. Yeah, somebody gave me money that you spent. It's from me. It's from me. God said, pour it. Yes, it's for you, but pour it. They asked John Wesley, why do people keep following you? Why do people keep following you? He said, a man cannot be on fire and people will not come and watch him. <laughs> oh Lord, you are my God and I will seek you earnestly. Talk to God, somebody. Talk to God. Pastor David, please come quickly. Talk to God. Lift your voice. Tell him I want your heart. Put fire on me. That will let me reach out to your heart. But see, if you know his heart, you will never offer strange fire. 
many offered things to God that God has in need. You had, you had to be here at this time. You came at your time. It's a strange fire. God, you want his heart. Where's I in kind? Sleeping. Purify our passion. Can we have the words on the screen? Pastor David, get the fire. Somebody get the fire. He will come after his heart. He will cause a fire to come on you. You can't offer any strange thing to God in this season we are entering into. sleep let me tell you this you know one of the things that doesn't make us have fire these days because some of you are sleeping when Jesus told the people to wait in the apparel they waited 10 days 10 nights 
no sleep. Ten days, they were the people who Jesus told to wait were five hundred. By the time the Holy Ghost came, there was only one twenty people in the room. The rest of the three eighty, nobody knew. Some of them was going to cook their meal. Some were going to wee wee. Some were going to. When the Holy Ghost came, he didn't mind them. The problem with us these days is that we want the Holy Ghost, but we don't have time. We don't have time for it, and we think that oh, rah, 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 here he comes, Master Jai. He papa be a chreno. The Holy Spirit, he took, he was the last person to come. God came, Jesus came, the Holy Ghost. He's the only person that God said, if you mess with him, I won't forgive you. He's God's treasure. So you don't, you don't think you just do rah, blah, 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 then he just comes and land, then you do some magic, then he goes, no. If you can't tarry and wait, you can't have him. So start praying again. And no sleeping. If I see you sleeping, I'll let you go home. If you're, okay, if you're feeling sleepy, go home. We have closed your service. Those who want Holy Ghost can stay. Precious Holy Spirit, let's start again. Precious Holy Spirit. We are in need of you. Sing boldly. Purify our passions. To shine from darkness, you are brooding over every darkness, you are causing light to shine from darkness. Listen to me, let me teach you something. Satan was able, or Lucifer was able to walk on fire because of a type of fire within him. Did you hear me? He was able to walk on it because of a type of fire within him. Whatever you are able to do is because of something God has deposited in you. And when God picks that thing from you and brings it out, that thing becomes an enemy. The opposite, a man without light is in darkness. A man without faith is doubting. A man without sight is blind. Let's be on our feet. Say, Holy Spirit of God. You didn't say it with boldness. I want the fire of the Holy Spirit to burn me burn me anything that you did not build burn it down and anything that is yours let it be purified do not take your Holy Spirit the grace that enables me to do what I want to do do not take it from me Listen to me. How many of you have prayed over some weakness that God should take it away from you and God has not taken it? It is not a weakness. It's a, <laughs> it's a strength. It depends on how you see it. 
you can see it as weakness because you don't, you've not appropriated it well. So God is not taking it because that is the reason why you will make it. Say, Lord Jesus, I stand upon your word. Purify me with fresh fire. I don't want to be lukewarm and I don't want to be cold. I want a fresh fire to do what you want me to do. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The, the song should still be going on. If the words are ready, put it on the screen. If you're a leader and you don't have fire, nobody can catch fire in your department. The fire in your ministry is determined by you, the leader. You are the torch bearer. You determine the atmosphere in your department. The temperature of the environment is determined by your presence. I arrive in many places and my arrival changes the atmosphere straight away. I don't need to say a word. You see lawyers hiding their alcohol. National lawyers, they are hiding their alcohol. Why? I have arrived there. What is this? you are afraid of witches troubling you sickness troubling you don't worry when the fire is strong it will naturally burn curses it will naturally burn diseases and yet will purify you You are brooding, brooding over every darkness. You are causing your light to shine on darkness. You are brooding, you are brooding over every darkness. Oh. To shine on darkness, precious Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit, hey. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. We are in need of you. I sit in the taxi those days. And all the passengers tell the driver, get this guy down. Or else we are not moving. Or else we get out. <laughs> I have said nothing. I have not spoken. 
is fire. That fire purifies gold, expands metal, but burns chaff. weakness when the fire comes on it will purify it that is when the gospel becomes an evangelist the womanizer becomes an evangelist the talker becomes a prophet Now we have to call you to come for meetings. Did you? We have to ask you why are you not coming to church? Why are you not at the media room? Why are you not coming for morning service? Oh, did you? It's you, did you? Not did you in the Bible? It's you. That is when you see a call from church and you cut the line. It's still did you? You refuse anything that will spark you back. Please divide the words. You are brooding. have lost their passion for God. That is when you gossip. That is when you have time to talk about things that will not build ministry. Because there is no fire. I've never seen a man on fire standing there and just talking. Precious Holy Spirit, let's go. Precious Holy Spirit. We need of you. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. We need of you. When your passion is not purified, you, you offer strange fire. Keep your nice when your it, you are, your passion is not purified. You kill your David. You chase your David out. Every 
If you have time for trivia things, you don't have fire on you. A man on fire does not have time for imbecility, trivia. There is something urgent. You don't go for crumbs when the meal is on fire. You are brooding. You are brooding over every Rapalia. A man on fire knows what to do and does it well, does it with passion. Anything that is not of God, you will never do it with passion. You can't do it with passion. When the fire is of God, some of us have passion for things that will never build us. What will never make us better is what we are passionate for. But what will make us successful, we don't have the time for it. I know I need to write books. I don't have passion for it. I have time to sleep. I know I, know I need to study. But when I'm studying, I don't like it. But partying, I am happy partying. Then there is something wrong. The fire has been misplaced. And whatever has fire will bring results. Trouble comes faster than goodness because your passion for evil is higher. You are brooding, 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 brooding. Man of God, when will you pray for the fire to come on me? Pray for it first. Have a heart for it first. If you have a heart for it, just a simple word will let the fire come on you. Last see a white flame, a blue flame. You are brooding. I see orange. I see red. I see another blue. It is lightning on people's head. It is going to burn on you. Any deposit of evil will not survive this fire. It can be sickness, it can be a curse, it cannot survive the fire. You are brooding, you are brooding, you are brooding. It is one thing to sing. Is another thing to sing with fire. It is one thing to preach. It's one thing to preach with fire. When you preach with fire, the preaching casts hands. It doesn't cut the flesh. When your preaching casts the flesh, they will go back to sin. When it casts the heart, rent your heart and not your cloth. You are the precious Holy Spirit, brood on us, O Lord. Light to for the last time, precious Holy Spirit. You precious Holy Spirit. If not a single, let's sing it now. We are in need of you. Purify our passion. Lord, come and take us to you. We stand before you. In just the way 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to make sure your apple becomes better. Some fire must pass through your apples. Every inhibition, every roadblock must be cleared by this fire. The timidity, the fear. Light to shine. Now lift your hands with me. Please stay away from the windows. Come in. Stay away from the windows. If you are not a protocol, you're a pastor. Stay away from the windows. And if you are by the window, don't close your eyes. Say, Holy Spirit, I love to serve you. But I can't do it by myself. I need a fresh fire. I need a fire to consume me that everything around me will have the fire. I want my followers to catch the fire. Lord, your followers are yours. They are not mine. If you give me the right fire, they will pick it up. Every strange fire I will never offer. Let this fire come on me again. As this fire comes on me, give me grace to pay the price, to sacrifice, to keep this fire always burning. Now lift your hands, be quiet for me. Precious Holy Spirit, witches can stand this fire. Demons can't stand this fire. Sicknesses, diseases, curses, generational ancestral can't stand this fire. The only thing that can survive this fire is our destiny and our identity in you. Sweet Holy Spirit, let this fire that came down on the day of Pentecost visit us again. And like Elisha said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume us. Consuming every satanic altar. Consuming any satanic incursion. Consuming any satanic plot. And lifting our spirit for greater works for Jehovah God. Now let the fire begin to burn. Let it 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 burn. Help him to put it. Pastor Victor, help the person there to put the plate. Let it burn. Let it burn. 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 Ben, 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 Ben. And as it burns, it takes away what is not of God. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it come upon your life. Let the fire. Let the fire. Lord, your word says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Everybody whose spirit does not have this fire, does not have this light, let the fire come on the person now. Let the fire take over. Let the fire take over. 
let the fire take over let the fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire lord nobody wants to offer strange fire we won't offer any strange fire we are under authority and of authority we will not offer any fire that is not of you not ever again not again not again not again let the place be quiet for me very quiet Holy Spirit, do it. Do it. Holy Spirit, do it. Thank you, Jesus. Set our souls on fire. Shh. Everybody try and control yourself. Try and control yourself. Set our souls on fire. Set our hearts. <laughs> yeah. Every heart that has touched you let that heart be on fire once again. Fuel. Be refueled. Fire. 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 I break this curse. I break that curse. I break that curse with fire. Out of her belly. I break the curse from your belly. I curse that curse from your belly. I command that curse to burn by fire. Fire! Not just your belly, your abdomen. A caparo kete rikete masu pikete rimbu kipiko tu kata. I burn your abdomen with fire, fire, fire. Wherever altar you have been laid upon, that your finance, your marriage, your destiny, your children, your womb has been laid upon. Other than the altar of God, I bring the fire of God over this ministry in my life, over that altar, and I command that altar to burn with a fresh fire of God. Let the fire from heaven descend over any altar other than the altar of God, and let the fire of God consume the place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever has anything arrested in a shrine by a marine spirit, by a marine hold, and he's saying that this person will never make it. If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume their altars and consume their sacrifice and consume whatever has been laid upon. Wherever your name is written, wherever your children's name are written, Whatever your home has been written in, whatever your education, your life, your ministry, your service to God has been rendered useless, let fire come down from heaven and consume that altar. Fire, 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 fire. It will burn. You will feel that heat on your feet. Some of you will feel it on your hand. Some of you, it will burn your head. Your whole body will begin to vibrate. I don't care who. I don't care what. Whether it is in me, in the body, anyone who has put an altar to speak against you, let the altar of Jehovah God rise up against that spirit and set you free. For let this fire consume that altar operations will take place here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Spirit of timidity and fear. Timidity and fear will burn. Fear. Insecurity. 
Now watch it out for me. Some people's hands will begin to vibrate uncontrollably. When their hands begin to vibrate control uncontrollably, can I have them brought forward to me? Spirit of the living God tells me that these people have their future held bound and the angels of God just got there and is bending the chains, is bending the, the, the ropes that has held them bound. Is setting them free. Is setting them free. Is setting them free. Is setting them free. Their hands will begin to vibrate. Just bring them to me. Just bring them to me. They have been tied down. They have been tied down. They have been held down by a spirit. But fire is burning those ropes. Yeah. Yeah. Just bring them. There are five of them. I'm seeing only three. Let all the five be arrested. Let all the five be arrested by the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. That is why Satan doesn't want you to have the fire. Because if you are not on fire, you are a useless being. Spirit of God, release the rest of the two for me. Release the two. Release the two. Near Lord, release the one. The last person. The last person whose destiny has been held bound. Let this fire consume that altar. Let this fire consume that altar. It's burning, 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 burning. Yeah, burn. 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 Where is that last person? Spirit of God. Release that person. Release that person. Identify this one for me. And release the person for me. By the count of three. One, two, three. Touch. Your hands will begin vibrate. Bring the pen. Bring, bring, bring her. Bring her fast. Thank you, Jesus. Fire. Fire. Somebody shout fire. Shout fire. How you shout will determine the kind of fire you have. Shout it again. Now keep quiet. Now, Holy Spirit, like fire, burn. 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 Your brain has become dull. Your brain has become dull. Your mindset has become dull. You do the right thing at the wrong time. You don't do it when you must do it. And it is a spirit. It is a spirit that will make you delay and make you annoy the grace of God on your life. The spirit now the five people that came here, please watch them for me because it will burn their whole body. You see, that they themselves want to blow air because their whole body will be on fire, their whole body will be on fire. Please watch them, be fast about it. Please, power, 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 power. Their whole body is on fire. Satan fears hellfire. Addictions are breaking. Addictions are breaking. Addictions. Nobody knows it. Nobody knows it. But it's a demonic addiction. And without it, you can't survive a week. Without it, you can't survive a week. The fire of the Holy Ghost is burning it. Can you just imagine? Sickness is your addiction. Because that demon, you need some medication. There's some medication that demon needs. And because that demon needs that medication, you must always have that sickness. Fire is burning. Fire is burning. Fire is burning. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume every altar of addiction. Medical addiction. Every sickness that has been injuncted, planted on anybody's life. So that the person will waste finance. The person will waste resources. Because that is the tangent that the enemy is going to destroy. But the power in the name of Jesus. Lord, these are the people that work with me. And none of them can be used by the enemy for destruction. Let fire come down from heaven and consume that altar. That altar now by the count of three another section of people are being delivered from a stronghold of addiction. One, two, three, touch! Yeah. 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 There is somebody. Your tummy is going to be flat. Now, your stomach 
a female, your stomach is going to become flat. You know why? The enemy has intentionally made it that way for you to be worried about your shape, your body type, and that is killing you. That fatness in the belly melts now by the count of one. Go! One! Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Kappa, kappa. If you desire the fire, you will have the fire. If you desire the fire, you will have the fire. If you desire the fire, you will have the fire. Your whole body will vibrate with fire. You're hoping. Somebody help. Your whole being will demand fire. Your whole being will demand fire. Elijah said, Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you when you're 50. A man of God without fire is no man of God. I repeat it. John said he's the refinest fire. freshness of the Holy Spirit fire comes upon this life for your ministry to be birthed daughter of Zion the freshness of the fire of the Holy Ghost comes upon you for you to have the inner tenacity the boldness the audacity to get out of that Addiction for the will of God for your life. Come now, Satan, pack your back and package. Go and come no more. I need some strong people here. I need some strong people here. I need some strong people here. Baga, bua, bakata. Zaka. This spirit, you think he's a lady, very slim, but he's a very strong spirit. Repel, ramakata. Let's deal with this thing. Because hear me, sometimes we are leaders, but we are leaders, and because of our leading, certain things we do make Satan have access to, to destroy us. Now, everybody, please lay your own hands upon your own head and begin to command fire to consume you. Everybody, pray that prayer. Now, there is enough fire here. You are also anointed. Command your own fire to come upon your own life. Ask the fire of the Holy Ghost to come over your whole being. Ask this fire. That fire, when it comes on you, your bad dreams will change. Your satanic dreams will change. Your bad dreams, your evil dreams will change. Ask for fire over your whole life. Freshness of fire. Freshness of fire. Come on. Let it go. 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 Timidity. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yes. Where are the protocol? Watch it. When this fire broods on you, who is that devil that will dare visit you? You have a, you you have an assignment, and the fire of God will rekindle that assignment. It's a fire of God that rekindles that assignment, and as it rekindles that assignment, satanic powers break. Satanic Satanic altars break. Satanic impact breaks over your life. Break it, break it, wake it up. I awaken your spirit, daughter of Zion. Listen, I need my protocols to be very fast. If possible, take away anything that will be a hindrance. Bra, bra, pick it, take it, take it. Cameras, reposition yourself. TVs, be repositioned. Because what I see here, I, what I see here, what I see here, you need fire. You need fire. You shall be filled with Holy Ghost and with fire. And with fire. With fire. When your fire comes, Satan doesn't like that fire. Because that is when you pray two hours, four hours non-stop. And they can't stand that thing from you. They call it, I can't stand that nonsense. So let me kill the fire. So it can only do it for two minutes. Now let it bend. Ben, 
You see, your meal is not cooking fast. Your dream is not manifesting fast because the fire under the stove is too small. You are supposed to cook or bridge for 100,000 people. But the fire is cooking for 500 people. <laughs> you need more sticks. Oh God. You need more wood. More acacia wood. More shitting wood to be placed under the altar. You need more stuff. Replicatable. Please watch us still. I've, I've laid hands and something is cooking. Bleh. Try and go down. Hmm? Try and go. If the power of God comes on you, don't try to get up again. I beg you. Because even though you look like your eyes are open, you are still in another realm. So that my little protocol team can work. Lay hands on yourself and command fire to consume you. Ask your own self to have fire. You have the Holy Ghost, but you've not asked the fire of that part to come on you. You can say, Lord, let me love you. Lord, let me serve you well. But you need also ask, Lord, let the fire consume me. Fire. Fire. Watch this one. Watch this one. An addiction is breaking. An addiction breaks. An addiction breaks. An addiction breaks. An addiction breaks. Addictions are breaking. What's that? Addictions are breaking. No, those things, you can't do it. I've taught you these things. Yeah, it's not every was Proka piata dikiti zinte rambaribe. Fire of God from your hair to your feet is on fire. That altar, that altar. Who are you? Fire over your head. Talk again. Let me see. Fire over your head. Fire into your heart. <laughs> Come on. Break from her. Break from her. Break from her. You are powerless and useless. I take your weapons you use against her. And I make you useless. You have no power. You are We can do the fire. Keep praying. Ask the fire to burn. Ask the fire to burn. Ask the fire to burn. Witches become powerful because you're. You see, the Bible said, Why did the virgins, they were virgins, they were holy? How come they could not enter the door of opportunity? Their oil ran out and their fire was off. Their fire was off. When they got the fire, it was too late. The opportunities were gone. That is the unfortunate thing. By the time they got the fire back on, the time their lamp was brightening, the door was shut. You say you are a king. Now show me your power. You don't have your time. Give me space here. Out of him now. Out. Let the fire burn. 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 Oh, this is a small spirit. Get out of it by the count of three. One, two, three. Go. Go. Never to come again. Now. Break from there. Give me space. Go down and become useless. Keep praying. Ask fire over your life. Listen, pray. The funny thing is that Satan always knows when the door is about to open. Then he can the thing in your belly, you vomit it by the count of three. Out. Angels of God, go through the belly and let it come through the mouth. Now. Now. Vomit 
it is. Every covenant by blood, anything swallowed physically in your dream, it comes out of your mouth. Pray, pray, break from him. You altar of Jezebel. Out of him. Out of him. Out of him. Be engulfed and enveloped in fire. Satan will drain your oil and your fire is off. Yes, you will sin. You'll be forgiven. But that will take you backwards. Your fire is gone. Now you couldn't pray. You couldn't survive it. You are forgiven, but your door is closed. When will the door open again? You will knock it, knock it, knock it, knock it. It's gone. And you say, oh, I am living under grace. <laughs> yes. Pray for fire. Pray for fire. Pray for fire. You need that fire. You need that fire. You need that fire. My team be ready. Another fire is coming down. Thank you, Jesus. There's a fire coming down to break the spirit of rebellion. Now, it is not rebellion as in rebelling against God or something. But this spirit makes you rebel against your own destiny. This spirit makes you rebel against your own assignment. This is the kind of spirit that came on Saul. That Saul fought a David who can change his life. A David who could have even become his in-law. It's a spirit of rebellion. And every rebellious spirit is a witchcraft spirit. Two days for your door to open, you messed up. It's a spirit of rebellion. You decided never to masturbate. Just tomorrow, your heavens will open. <laughs> you got there. You did what you are not supposed to do. Why? It's a spirit. And there are some spirits that are, they don't possess human beings. They use human beings. Peter, the disciple of Jesus, was there and Satan said, go and say this to Jesus. Go and tell Jesus you won't die. Why? Because that was a spirit. This spirit will never visit you in church. Will never visit you when you are praying. But when your door is about to open, that's when you are lazy. You don't want to go anywhere. It only arrives when you are closer to the opportunity. The accepting desire comes upon you to misbehave. It's a rebellious spirit. If you don't rebel. You are so humble to church. You are humble to the authorities. You, are, you do anything anybody will tell you. But when it comes to your own personal vision, your own purpose for God, you rebel against it. Lift your two hands up. Say this, my hands are on fire. As I lay it upon my head, every spirit of witchcraft assigned against my destiny backtracks, cannot come near me again in Jesus' name. Now put your hands on your two and be quiet for me, please. Can all of you playing instruments move down, please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, anybody whose destiny is in your hands. 
who must make it for your name's sake, for your kingdom's sake, lest the hidden say, you God, you are poor general. I ask you for, to use one thing to save these people. Let your jealousy, your jealous spirit of God, come, lest the hidden rejoice and release this eight people for me now because lord their season is this april their season is this april and this eight one two three four five six seven eight bring them to me one two release them release them release them this april is their month release them release them it is their month and they can't repeat that evil it's a witchcraft spirit it is a way it doesn't possess them it, it doesn't come on them in church it doesn't visit them it only gets attracted to opportunities it only gets attracted when they are near opportunity it only gets attracted when they are by the door you it will never they will work 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 you can read this thing in judges chapter 6 he said the media is only visit when it is harvest time they come when it is time for you to enjoy, then they come in to break you down. Lord, release all of them from all the eight. Leave none of them out. Leave none of them out. Leave none of them out. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it saturate their life. Let it saturate their life. Let it take over their life. Fresh fire. I intention to move far away from anybody. Because he must take you. He I've asked his jealous God. God is a jealous God. Like a, a, a man is jealous over the wine. Let God be jealous for your sake. He said, I am a jealous God. Visiting iniquity upon the first, second, and third, fourth generation. Let the wrath of God and God's jealousy be enveloped to fight for you. To be unleashed from that entrapment, from that trap. May they never come near your dwelling ever again. All of them, wherever you are, Holy Spirit, move on, 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 move on. Come on, 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 come on. Ra kata leke te pusha, ziki te belo, ziki te ben. Bra pa pa kata kata. Imaka, you can't stop this. I beg you, you can't stop this. When Moses activated the jealousy of God in Exodus thirty-two, and said, "God, if you don't deliver your people, and you look at their sin, the hitting will say you are poor general. You just brought them into the wilderness to kill them. Many are saying you have been faithful serving God, but look at your life. Many are saying you have always going to lead this meeting. You always going for this meeting. You always going for that meeting. But look at your life, and your life is becoming an embarrassment." to the will of Jehovah God and he says I should tell you for his name's sake he is not permitting this thing to come again and he's breaking you free hey, 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 hey. it's happening it's happening it's happening it's happening it's happening it's happening you can't sleep that spirit you can't hide it you can't hide it I awaken it I awaken that spell I awaken it it's a spirit I awaken it I awaken it I awaken, it. I awaken, it. I awaken. you see that spirit can hide it can hide within you it can hide around you it can hide around it can just follow you. They are opportunity monitors. They are breakthrough monitors. They just monitor. They will monitor you. They will monitor you. So when you are praying fire, they are not there. When you are praying deliverance, they are not there. When you are, no, 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 they are not there. But when you are about to harvest, then they arrive there just to spoil the harvest. Watch it because if anything happened first, this is nothing. The next one is going to be serious because a lot of violence will take place in here. La Caparo Sikitebe, Jehovah God, Jehovah God, for your name's sake, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume that satanic altar that comes to destroy the future of these ones. Lord, these ones must also have a testimony. Please release them for me. When the power comes on them, just help them forward. 
all the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Spirit of God, release them. Release them by fire. Release them by fire. Release them by fire. Release them by fire. Lord, if not for anything, for the sake of we and many that are depending on their success, for the sake of many that will make it because of them, let them be released. Let them be released. Let them be released. Let them be released. Repetotiada Rema Kata Mikute Zikiti Bikiti Rempe Rontani is going to be violent, it's 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 going to be violent. I want everybody who has laid hands on his own head, pray against that spirit, whether you know you have it or not, just pray against it, just pray against it that you cannot come to the arrival point, like I'm saying, you cannot get to airport with your passport and arrive there and say, No, you can't enter America. You have visa into America. You got the visa. You got to um, um, airport. And you, to enter into the city, they say they refuse you. It's a spirit. Oh, 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 oh. Bring me. Bring her. Bring her from the back. Spirit of God. 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 I just saw, as you keep praying, God, I saw a thick cloud dropping on people's head. And the Lord said, as I bend this, I'm ready to pour a particular rain on them. Because if they can pull it through this apple, then they will see my glory. And when they see my glory, then they'll be able to know how my grace and mercy can work for them. Please, push, help them. Look, look at it over there. Fire! over the place. You can't get out of the auditorium. Let the fire consume. Angels, bring the person in here. Angels, bring him here. Bring him, bring him, bring him. Bring him. Now bring him. Protocol. These things, you don't use strength. You use prayer. You can't, you can't fight this thing with your strength. Ten of you can't overcome this person. Because it's a spirit. You can't use physical strength to. <laughs> Fire! Lord, not this apple. 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 Now everybody pray that this April, nothing can stop your blessing. Pray like this is your last. You nothing can stop your testimony this April. Makatabe. Carry this person from here to the altar somewhere. Put this person up there. I turn your head to fire. I turn your head to fire. Your whole being to fire. And I take your power from you. I make you harmless and useless. You can't have any power again. You have no power again. No, 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 no. No, you, no don't use your physical strength. Make us some trauma. Give me space. Give me space. Nobody should touch her. Give me space. I take away the ten rings from your finger. I take away the ten rings from your finger. And by this you have no more power. Now go. Now she can't fly. You can't get out of here. Now by these rings off of your finger, I enter into the shrine in which the covenant was uh, written and signed. And I undo it with fire. No more. I'll leave her. She's free. She's free. Just leave her. Pray. Pray this April. Pray this April. Stand on this altar, this auditorium, and tell God, God, I didn't come here to joke. Anybody that wants to joke with my testimony this April, let fire consume. This April, no weakness. He's brooding over us. 
He's causing light to shine out of darkness. Protocol. You see why you need fasting and prayer? It is not mature. I make you harmless and useless. Feel him. Let him go. You mm. Faust, give me space. Give me space. I command that demon. Epileptic spirit. No more. No more. They sold you to him. But he's been bought by the blood of Jesus. The blood buys him. And by the token of the blood, this one is freed. Watch him. Watch him. Just watch him. And you are free. Free from that power. Free from that spell. Free from that. Come here. Give him to me. Bring him to me. By the count of three, one, two, three, get out of him. I take authority over that spirit. Out! Peace in your heart. Peace in your soul. Now healing takes place. Just relax for him. Just relax for him. Make sure he doesn't run from here. Angels of God, arrest him. Arrest him. Bring him to me. Don't touch him. Just pull him to me. Bring him to me. Angels of God, bring him. Let him submit to authority in the name of Jesus. Now. Submit the authority of Christ now in the name of Jesus. By the count of three. One. Two. Three. Let the power of Satan break completely from you. Give me the oil. I'm just relaxing. How about my spirit is going to give me Demand your portion. Beatrice, leave the console. Get up. You are freed. You are freed. Come to me. Where is Beatrice? Leave the console. Come to me very fast. Quickly, quickly. Quickly. She was sitting there. The spirit had manifested. She was just pretending she's behind the console. Where the spirit was manifesting there. Then she leave. <laughs> That's why I can tell people, you can't hide behind doing things for God and think that no. Get out of her waist. That beat. Bang! Scatter! Scatter. Out of her body. Free her. Free her. Not ever again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Something will come out of you like you have given birth. You birth something. That thing that troubles you every month is coming out of your womb. You birth it physical, not dream. Now I begin to thank God. We have to be closing.
Shout fire seven times, somebody. Now begin to talk to God that this fire, you don't want it to go away. Your light brightens. Satan's brightness was because of the fire. The fire determines the lamb's brightness. Good. Okay, now. I saw what cannon. Let it come out. Let it descend. Let it descend. Let it descend. Everything out. Thank you, Jesus. I spend time teaching you for you to understand what you got this evening. If I'm you, I'm going to get the message. Go home praying still. Listening to it. Don't just get a message. Get a message and the prayers and the ministration. Now when she goes down, don't carry her up. Let it be sustained till she gets home. And let her wake up with that thing out of her. I dispatch medical angels to go with you. Now lift your two hands up to him. Say, Holy Spirit. I just don't need you. I need your fire. I need your fruits. And I need your power. I thank you that I have all this. In Jesus' name. Now lift up here and say, I'm clothed in the righteousness of God. I have the helmet of salvation. I have the breastplate of righteousness. I have the sword of the spirit. I have the shoe or the preparation of the gospel. I have the belt of truth. I am what God wants me to be. I am covered, sealed in the blood of Jesus. Amen.